Guys, in this video series, we're building something very interesting. We're building a Google results scraper. This is the part one of the series. Basically, what we're building is that any keywords or queries that you put out onto Google, the results that come back, we want to scrape the results from the Google site itself and we want to print them out to our terminal. That's what we're building. And you will learn a lot of intricacies in Go Golang if you stick around and you complete the entire series and you will get a lot of hands-on experience with uh, Golang. So I, I recommend that you subscribe to this channel and you stick around till the end of the series. There will be about three to four videos total in the series. This is the part one. So uh, let's get started. So first what I'll do is I'll try to explain to you exactly how we're going to build it. Uh, so that, uh, so uh, you know, a lot of people ask me why do I show everything on the draw board first before I start coding? That's And that's actually uh, a very good question and that's because uh, I do something very important before I start coding and that's called planning. So the more you plan, the less you, uh, the less mistakes you make uh, while coding, right? So because everything uh, that you're going to put out into the code, you already have everything out in your mind, everything planned out, uh, even even the kind of functions that you'll be writing and you can even, you know, decide about what type of functions you can um, what do you call it reuse so i recommend this approach to everyone uh, you have to always uh, put something out on the draw board or on the paper before you start writing any code otherwise you'll make so many mistakes uh, so many silly mistakes that th they'll take a long time to uh, fix all the bugs so uh, you know so let's get to our draw board uh, you know so on a draw board first let me explain to you what we're going to build and then once i start building that in, in code you're going to uh, ex you know you're going to understand everything so much better uh, so what we're going to do first is we're going to define the search result that we're expecting so we'll uh, use a struct a golang struct to define the kind of search result that we are expecting from uh, google okay then we'll define all the google domains so we have dot com dot fr for france you know dot in for india those kind of google domains we'll define all of them then we'll define user agents so user agents are basically uh, in the sense right now uh, we use our Google Chrome browser, right? This browser to uh, ask for any results from Google. So Google knows who is asking for the results. But uh, in our case, since we are scraping, our Golang needs to pass off as a user agent. And then we're going to have to define user agents in the sense like it's, if it's a Mozilla, uh, you know, uh, browser or it's a, uh, what do you call it, uh, Google Chrome browser. So we'll uh, include some of those user agents here, right? Define them. So the next thing is uh, we'll create our func main which is the main uh, where, where the main you know control of the uh, program res resides in golang we'll define the keywords that we need to search so these we can keep changing as in as in how you like and uh, once uh, you know i build the program while you're building it with me you can put your own keywords and uh, you know so that you can customize the whole query and build it uh, yourself and then you have your google query function so this is a separate function other than the ma main function so we'll have a google query function the google query function what it does is it, it takes the keywords and it just basically builds a google query so to search anything on Google, you're going to have to basically build a query and which basically is run on Google and then you get the results. And then we'll select a random user from uh, these user agents that we have defined. We'll select a random user. Now these two steps, right, defining uh, user agents and selecting a random user agent, these two steps you're going to find very often in, uh, in a lot of uh, scraping and crawling videos that I do. And then you have your scrape function, which basically makes the request to the URL like google.com or google.com uh, dot fr whatever you know it makes the request to the url and uh, it will make the request depending on what we'll pass as the query so if we say dot com uh, you know target dot com it's going to make a request to dot com if we say fr it's going to make a request to dot fr if we say dot com dot fr is going to make a request accordingly and we'll also have a language uh, parameter here in our query and we'll have a page and we'll have the number of results that we want so this is the kind of query that we'll pass in our uh, main function you can customize it so the whole point is that we'll keep everything very customizable so that you can play around with this later on and learn from it so uh, at the end what we'll do is we'll pass the result we'll have to parse uh, the result that we get back from this url right the whole html and we're going to store it according to our struct and then we'll append it to a list uh, append all the links to a list and then we'll just going to uh, print it out that's the whole uh, you know con uh, there's the whole plan right now and we may make small tweaks to it i might need to change the name of the functions or i may create new functions so uh, but right now what's important is to have some plan at all uh, at least so that you can make changes to it later on rather than having no plan at all right so I hope that makes sense. Do subscribe to this video so that uh, to this channel, sorry, so that you stay updated when the second part of this video comes out. And thanks a lot for watching.